Hello and welcome to Tete Tea, brought to you by the Prabha Ketan Foundation in association with Kahali. And this is me, Adveta Kala, your host. And joining me this evening is a fascinating woman, Rita Jairath, Dr. Rita Jairath. And she's just informed me that the doctorate is an honorary doctorate that the United Nations has bestowed on her a couple of years ago. But uh, wh why we really want to chat with Rita today is uh, her fascinating journey into the world of female bodybuilding and being a pro athlete in that field and how it's changed her life. And I, I just think it's fascinating, Rita. Welcome to Tetati. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed, it's very special, especially considering the time I started and the circumstances in which I, in which I started. And I'm really uh, so full of gratitude the way things have happened for me. Uh, you say the circumstances in which you started. What were the circumstances, if you can share that with us? Yes, uh, I wouldn't have you know, imagined, uh, I wouldn't have fathomed in the wildest of my imagination that I would ever get into bodybuilding. Uh, of course, now uh, uh, being at a different stage, I realize that we all, in certain, in a certain sense, when we are building our body, uh, we are building our bodies. Uh, but yes, I speak about competitive bodybuilding. I actually uh, went to the gym with my son uh, for the first time uh, when he was already 15 years old, and uh, uh, he is an autistic child. And mm -hmm. uh, I had been looking after him since. Uh, you know, since obviously as a mother since birth and being a special child, I had to, you know, give a lot uh, of me. I had to put a lot of my energy, time and focus into him. Uh, that too, from a time where there was hardly any awareness uh, about autism. Even his mm -hmm. diagnosis was, you know, really a big deal. Uh, that was in 1988. Uh, wow. So uh, it, uh, nobody knew about it. And I actually, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have Google that everything is so accessible. I went out to read Encyclopedia Britannica. I got literature from US and I kind of established for myself and the latest research that was being done in it. And uh, so, you know, uh, I, it was always me who would tell my mm -hmm. child what to do, what not to do. This is right, this is wrong. Um, he was really on, in a world of his own that's uh, sometimes so typical with the uh, neurodiverse children. And right. uh, this was the first time he said that he saw a film star and said, I want to have a body like that. And uh, he would uh, try to emulate that. So, you know, I, I, I thought it was very fascinating that he's coming up with something of his own. And uh, I, I felt it's my duty to, you know, get him there. And uh, I couldn't have left him at the gym on his own. He was, uh, you know, by normal social standards, I would say, uh, a little uh, clumsy or whatsoever. I had to be with him to protect him, to guide him and to take care of him. But I didn't know, uh, you know, the moves uh, which had done otherwise in weight training. I was, uh, of course... Uh, very much into fitness and sports i had been uh, competing in swimming and uh, in the process of bringing him up uh, i was told that autistic children have uh, sometimes uh, you know cerebral hypoplasia and then they may have problems in balancing so i was trying to teach him balancing uh, mm -hmm. exercises and sports like skating so when mm -hmm. i took him uh, to the gym for the first time i started teaching him I realized that I too have a natural flair for uh, weight training. I just took to it like fish takes to water. And then everybody wow. in the world was, uh, you know, after me in the gym. Uh, because at that time, you know, 2004, 5, 3, 4, 5, nobody was doing, no women were doing weight training. It was like maybe one, so one or here and there, here and there. Uh, but in the gym where I lived, uh, you know, it was pretty awkward for a woman to come and do weights. So like when everybody is maybe you know doing yoga or some a bit of cardio or uh, not even coming to the gym uh, mm. so they found that i was being very silly and ridiculous and what the hell i'm trying to do and i faced a lot of opposition and uh, wow. having an autistic child having a mother who had suffered with schizophrenia i had always been facing uh, opposition and it was mm. like high time something in my soul said that now i need to just put my foot down and uh, you know authenticate myself you know so i mm. Uh, got qualified. I studied. I did a lot of courses, and I uh, so that I can say with authority because I had no one on my side. And in that mm -hmm. process, I realized that there is uh, nothing like that for women. Whereas 
uh, weight training for women is such a good thing, so so very desirable. And that, in a certain sense, even in the, the women in the village, uh, you know, when they lift heavy weights or they're the laborers or when they carry their children or they carry heavy pots of water for long distances, they're probably doing much more heavyweight training than we are, uh, that too in isometric holds. So I uh, uh, went on to talk about it and then I, uh, you know, I, I, by the time Google, uh, you know, internet had set in and emails were, uh, had become usual. Uh, so I started writing to trainers and coaches abroad. I got to know about Mr. Olympia and then I went to compete outside. I went to train outside. And then, you know, then it just uh, followed. Everything followed. That's that's followed. What, about, what about your immediate family? You know, your husband, your uh, in-laws. What was their response to when you started um, training? Yes, everybody thought it's, uh, it's ridiculous. And they thought, how can you ever monetize uh, exercise? Why are you exercising so much? And uh, uh, nobody found any sense in what I'm doing. Uh, but, you know, it's very gratifying to see today we have an entire fitness industry. Um, mm. So, you know, they, they, nobody ever thought at that time that exercise can be of any benefit. And uh, you should, if you're really so fond of exercising and moving yourself, uh, why don't you do the household work? That's also a form of resistance training. And, you know, you can just do a walk and that should be fine. And so yeah. I faced the initial opposition. And today a lot of women come to me and they say similar things like, it, 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 we still have a long way to go so that uh, that you know my husband uh, tells me that uh, you know you can have a home at the gym uh, you don't mm -hmm. need to come back or why are you doing this and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So the use of things they were all there but you know rita uh, the thing is that a lot of women who do go to the gym and the gym culture and the fitness industry etc have picked up they go in to get more slender and and you know to get that size zero and all of those things but you actually went to the gym to bulk up and to sort of define your body in a certain way and at one point like start competing so you, the, what were these notions of femininity you know that exist in our society how did you deal with that Yes, uh, you know, uh, I have always been unconventional and I think that uh, uh, there is a, a, I think uh, masculine and feminine should be looked upon as characteristics rather than, uh, you know, just uh, physical aspect of genders. Uh, we are from a culture where uh, Shiva is Ardhanarishwar and we, he has the woman and man both in him. Uh, every man has a little bit of estrogen every woman has a little bit of testosterone uh, mm -hmm. it is just taking the potential of human body it's exploring the potential of human body that how far a human body can go uh, the international federation of bodybuilding has mm -hmm. now banned actual women bodybuilding which was done in the 80s and uh, mm -hmm. they have now several divisions to make it more inclusive uh, mm -hmm. When you say that if it's a female body, uh, we cannot deny biologically that a woman has muscles. Without muscles, you cannot move. It, a muscle has to contract to do any sort of movement. So uh, we accentuate that muscle and see that explore to what level it can go anatomically. So the mm -hmm. divisions are now have been redefined since, especially since 2007, 8. And after that, of course, physique division is now uh, the bodybuilding division is now banned by the IFBB. It's just the physique, fitness, wellness, bikini. Uh, these are all uh, coming up. Uh, so I feel that uh, as women, we must be very proud of how our bodies are. And mm. it is perception. We, When you say size zero, uh, yeah. it is actually, it's actually an illness. Because if you're starving, you know, uh, uh, a woman from a poor family, financially uh, weak family who is starving, We'll get thin. What's a big deal? Uh, the challenge is to develop a structure uh, which has no, which has very less fat, but your muscles have been built because of hard work. So, as a person, I have always respected hard work and the uh, the idea to challenge yourself to do something which people say that you cannot do. Uh, so that kind of develops you into uh, you know a much more evolved human being from within. It is telling you, to, you know, it manifests itself in everything else that we do. So uh, when your muscles are developed, it will take the natural form of what is already there. We are not mm. 
uh, you know, making it into a big, uh, you know, Ronnie Coleman or a Hulk kind of thing. The, the well-built uh, bodybuilding structure of a female body is just an accentuated <laughs> female body. And then mm. that is when you show all the curves and the structure and how it should actually come forward. Even the sculptures in the, uh, you know, the ancient temples, they show right. a small waist and a very well-developed gluteus and uh, they're actually showing very well-built structures. We need to change our thoughts and our perception and our perspective of how mm -hmm. a body should ideally be in a woman. You know, I, I, I find what you're speaking about fascinating because uh, we do face issues like body dysmorphia. And, uh, you know, there was this study conducted that because of Instagram, especially young girls are having a lot of issues, you know, um, accepting their natural bodies and their body types. Uh, you know, we've all grown up in that culture that this is a pear shaped body and this shaped body. And, you know, women have uh, this very, um, I wouldn't, I mean, I often unhealthy, but not necessarily always unhealthy, but we have a difficult relationship with our bodies. We don't accept them in the way that we should, because to a large extent, society doesn't uh, train us in that way. It always tells us to critically observe our bodies. Uh, how has bodybuilding helped you overcome that sort of judgment when it comes to your own body and being a mother and your body having changed after motherhood? Yeah, when you're striving to be, uh, win a competition at world level, then you the first thing you have to know is what is your target. So when I looked at the uh, bodies of world champions, uh, you know whether they were fitness athletes, uh, they were amazing and the things they could do was phenomenal and that inspired me that that's how it actually should be uh, so uh, right now there is a change uh, it may be very little but uh, you know like in the France fashion shows they have banned the size zero models uh, because they get anorexic and they get sick even there are certain sports like gymnastics or artistic gymnastics where uh, where, where girls die of uh, anorexia or they miss their periods and all that. Uh, so, uh, but you know, there is another side of this. When we are all trying to become thin, thin, just because we can wear a certain dress and nobody is bothered about the long term health repercussions, nobody is looking at life as a whole. Uh, it's not, they don't want what they can do, they, they want to show what they can look. And they're living in a very illusionary digital world and not one-to-one -one relationships. They have not been prioritized. Uh, because if your mother looks after you, you find her most beautiful because you get peace uh, out of the love uh, that she's showing. But the, everything has become very visual, very uh, presentational, very super Absolutely. Uh, oriented. The other side of it is that now that this has become an extreme, uh, there, are, there are women who are maybe uh, you know uh, a little fat, and they are not living a disciplined life and they are telling us that uh, accept your body the way are the way you are accept your body the way you are and they can go and have alcohol uh, they can go and eat anything uh, any junk food any processed food and they are telling us to accept the body the way they uh, you know they yeah. are and accept your curves the curves are the muscles that you develop the curves are, curves is the natural shape of the body when you are at a normal fat level. Uh, hmm. There is no doubt about one thing that even when you talk about yoga, when you talk about the ancient Indian culture and so on and so forth, the curves hmm. were not the fat. Fat is the is the bulges. It's going to give you lifestyle disorders. It's going to, uh, you know, uh, affect your uh, mobility, your, uh, uh, you know, your flexibility, your range of motion. So there has to be a balanced thinking. Uh, you know, it's, it should be uh, neither of the extreme is good. So if you're getting too thin and you are losing bone density and, uh, you know, blood volume, it's going to harm you. It's going to affect your quality of life. Similarly, going to an, another extreme, not having self-control, emotional eating and, you know, just uh, fooling yourself and just going on doing anything. Um, it's, mm. it's a beautiful thing to the mind to be able to keep uh, discipline and condition yourself that, this is what I want. You need to prioritize what you want out of life. Uh, that is where the balance sets in. And then if it's neither of the extreme, like I may be having a little bit of fat here and there, I accept that, but that comes naturally, but that doesn't come because of lack of discipline.
So it's either mm. ways we need to balance it out. I have a, I have a reader, uh, I'm sorry, a viewer here who's asking a question, Nerf too. He wants to know about protein intake. Yes. I'm assuming yeah. it's a heat. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an extremely important thing because protein is something which, uh, you know, it's so much talked about and yet there is uh, not, uh, you know, substantial clarity about it. Protein is a part of us. Our skin is protein, hair is protein, hemoglobin is protein. So many of the hormones are protein. So if you're lying down, you don't even raise a finger. You still need 0.8 grams per kg of your body weight whatsoever. You, you just to, you know, take care of your wear and tear. Now, mm. what happens is that, especially in athletes, uh, Indian diet is very carbohydrate predominant because we had more of, you know, the agriculture kind of society and uh, the people who were doing a lot of hard works in the hard work in the past. So the protein content was not as much in the traditional diet. Uh, whereas I may say that the the original Indian diet, which was like everything about Indian culture, what which was there. Uh, we know when the Vedas were there and uh, the Upanishads were there, the ancient Indian heritage is different from what has happened in the last 200 years, especially after the Britishers mm -hmm. put a lot of uh, restrictions and banned so many of our, our uh, arts and, you know, uh, heritage mm -hmm. and treasures. So they banned a lot of things. So uh, there is a, a lot of misinformation about how things should be. Uh, even the casteism has affected our lifestyle because the Brahmins were eating something and the Kshatriyas were eating something and that the caste system evolved much later. That is not the real uh, Indian culture. Indian culture does not have sufficient protein. Now, if an athlete thinks that I do not want to take the supplement, the protein supplement, and he or she consumes uh, everything in the natural form, say, you know, in the naturally available form, uh, say, uh, uh, fish or chicken or the soya beans or the vegan proteins, they, they will be consuming a lot of fat and carbohydrates along with that because they need that mm -hmm. much protein. So uh, the, the, no, the number of calories will go extremely high. So if we are in a certain profession, which is, um, you know, especially sports or we are working very hard, then you do need to supplement yourself. Uh, coming mm -hmm. to supplements, the supplement we have uh, uh, easily available is whey protein, which is a part of milk. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the milk which we are consuming has a lot of, uh, you know, fat globules and lactose and casein and triglycerides and lot. So you cannot go on having, uh, you know, indefinite amount of milk. Whereas the, the companies, the, the science uh, R&D has been developed so much that they isolate the whey protein. So uh, what is whey? You know, when you, when the milk curdles, the watery part is the whey protein. They just isolate it, remove all the undesirable uh, elements which we do not want to take in excess and they isolate the whey protein and they have uh, kind of uh, done the microfiltration and uh, flavored it. You can take, a, take unflavored protein, but supplements must be used just as supplements. You, that cannot be part of your main diet. So again, we need a balanced approach when it comes to supplement, but even if you're not taking supplements, if you're not, you know, into sports and you just want to take protein in its natural form, we must make sure that the protein content is according to our calorie needs and our specific needs, our lifestyle and whatever activity mm -hmm. we are doing. So protein is very, very important. Mm. Uh, there's a uh, Lopa Mudra saying so, right? Even yoga postures keep in mind the different curves of our body. That's, that's really beautiful. Uh, yeah. Yoga may not have a very drastic uh, body shape changing effect. Yoga is extremely good for mobility. Now, when you do yoga, your mobility, your flexibility, range of motion increases beautifully. Your internal arc organs are stimulated. Say your pancreas is stimulated. Now that can help your biochemistry and you know get you to a level where you can you know really uh, optimize everything else that you're doing. So yoga, without yoga, you cannot do any sport. Yoga is extremely good, but yoga will not, yoga can give you an isometric stretch, but it will not burn a huge amount of calories the way, uh, you know, a cardiovascular activity can do. So we need, again, we need to kind of do a mix and match. Uh, uh, we have, you know, the International Sports Science Association says that there are several components of fitness. Uh, so there is strength, there is the one rep max, there is power, uh, there is your flexibility. 
uh, your cardiovascular stamina, your endurance, resilience. There are several uh, components of fitness. So yoga mm -hmm. takes, yoga is the foundation. When you do yoga, everything else falls in place. You know, you can do your uh, weight training without getting injured. And, uh, you know, your biochemistry is partially taken care of. So if you if you are living a yogic lifestyle and you do everything else, it's going to really optimize everything. But alone yoga may not do everything that you want. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to ask you this question. It's a little off syllabus. But uh, will you share with us how old you are? I know because it's on Wikipedia. But I'm just looking at your skin. <laughs> my God. I mean, I know this is about bodybuilding and fitness at that level, but your skin is flawless. It's tight. It's and, and please just share with everybody if you're comfortable. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's on Wikipedia. I cannot hide it anymore. So, uh, yeah, I'm 52 years old now and um, uh, I'll be 52. I'll complete 52 in December. Uh, Christmas. And uh, yes, my skill, again, a disciplined lifestyle. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, protein uh, is, uh, our skin is protein and it contains collagen. And a disciplined lifestyle can go a very long way in keeping us, uh, keeping our skin good. So that's a good tip. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Youthful, not just, uh, yeah, people on the chat are already saying, wow. <laughs> because it, I mean, really, because you, now there's a situation, Rita, where, Girls I've read as old as 15, 16, 17 in urban centers are getting Botox shots. <coughs> that is, uh, Botox is like, uh, I don't know what about Botox. Botox is poison. And, you know, um, it's kind of, it numbs that area. And uh, I don't know the repercussions of that. I think a doctor can say, but I know one thing that it numbs that area. It kind of paralyzes that area. You are not your expressions are not real it doesn't look real you know it looks very artificial and made up i think that is the point where we need to uh, you know we need to decide and prioritize what i want uh, i don't close my mind to anything but I, if you ask me personally i would never go into it it's it's like you cannot do it forever you need to uh, maybe people who are actresses or you know, they, there is a professional demand for them. They're going to earn money out of it. Even for actresses, even for actresses I mean, it, because some of them have got so much done that yeah. you're not able to express on exactly. screen. You know, how do you yeah. act when you're frozen? Yes, yes. How do you act when you're frozen? Exactly. That's the point. Uh, if if it is, um, it, it could be a very, very personal choice, but I don't think it should be the last resort. Yeah, I think that's how I can put it. It should be a last resort. Uh, you know, if there is some psychological issue or some some complex or something in certain cases, I, I'm not really in favor of Botox. I think that if you live uh, a good lifestyle, then it can give you a reasonably uh, good skin for a very mm -hmm. long time. You see, we people, I'm telling you 99.9% .9 of the people, they abuse their bodies. God is very kind. Your skin can get replaced in two to three months, complete skin. But what we do, people are taking alcohol, they want to eat junk food, they want to, uh, you know, they won't, don't want enough sleep, they sleep at odd hours, they don't live a good lifestyle. And then they go for Botox shot. But there is always a comeback. People want to do everything and then have a good skin. And then that actually the the all the tips are very very simple it's so simple but in today's world to do the most simple things is the most complex thing because you know the society around you they may want you your friends may want you to uh, sit and drink with them so when i go to my school uh, group you know when i go back with to party with them i don't do anything i don't drink anything and nobody tells me and i pay the bill i say I have come here to be with you. My my priority is to be with you. Uh, it's the present. So I want is, to be Rita, this is what I find very difficult. It's basically you have to break up with food giving you pleasure. You yes. know? Yes. And that's tough. You know, that's, that's a shift that is really difficult. And I'm speaking as an emotional eater. <laughs> it's really, really tough to do that. Now, this bodybuilding has really helped me a lot to recondition my mind. Uh, one of my coaches in Florida, uh, her name is Shannon Day, 
uh, you know, I worked with Bombshell Fitness. I trained under her because we didn't have coaches uh, in India. I think that really helped me. She said that, you know, your, when it comes to your relationship with your food, you need to uh, prioritize what you really want. What is it that you want and what is it you want out of food? Uh, and as she especially pointed out at me, because I was uh, the only Indian there, she said that every food, whatever vegetable it is, it has uh, a kind of natural flavor and, uh, you know, identity of its own. We must respect the natural flavor, learn to enjoy the natural goodness in every food, and we will never dislike a food. So we are told all the time that, you know, pizza is good, burger is good, this is good. So we think that is good. It's a kind of a mental conditioning. If we are told that, okay, this is a fun vegetable, if it is marketed like that, we will start enjoying, uh, you know, those particular vegetables. So we need to prioritize and what we want uh, out of food. That is that is the key. So what is what is your favorite indulgence now? Since you live such a disciplined life, What's your favorite indulgence? It's like um, in summers, I like mangoes. So I may have more than yeah. uh, I should. And But, you know, none of my, uh, it's always the portion that I, uh, you know, go weak with. Uh, I usually don't have any weaknesses at all. I like, I can live without, uh, you know, any food. But it's wow. when it's there right before me, uh, then I may tend to uh, overdo a, a healthy food. Like almonds, I love almonds. I may eat more than I should. So uh, the foods which are, uh, you know, which I am sensitive to, which I may overdo, the key is I don't keep them at home. You know, I just mm. get only as much as I need it. And I, uh, for me, the, the difficult part is the portion control. And, uh, mm. you know, I uh, measure my food and I eat so that I, do, I may not, you know, overeat. I weigh my food and eat. All bodybuilders mm. do that. Uh, that, uh, that conditioning comes very easily once you've been a bodybuilder because you are competing at world level. You are, you know, your uh, respect is at stake and then, you know, you have to do it. You've got to do it. And mm -hmm. so you figure a way out to teach your mind. And then that's how it, that's that's the best thing we take away from uh, being a bodybuilder. Because even if you mm -hmm. retire from bodybuilding, you know, that mindset stays with you. You know how to tweak the body. That is the best mm -hmm. thing we get out of you. When you're healthy and strong, like um, I am doing Bharat Natyam now. I even started Kalari Payet now. Uh, the, I'm able to do that now at my age because um, some of my classmates are like six years old. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm able to do it now because of uh, because I kept myself strong with bodybuilding and that kind of lifestyle. So that's the best thing. That's oh, why Bharat Natyam? Out of curiosity, why did you uh, decide to do a dance? Uh, I when I was young, I was living in Chennai, and for about ten years, I had done. But I could not uh, complete my arangetra. My my, you know, my mother was very sick, and um, it was very difficult for me at that time. My father was in the air force; he kept getting posted, and that was like kind of an unfulfilled dream. And after that, uh, after I retired from bodybuilding, I gave my exams. I became a judge, and I, then I thought that instead of doing cardio, let me do something which is which I wanted to complete in my life. So this is my fourth year now. Uh, you know, hopefully wow. I will again redo the entire thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I recently performed and I was like so, uh, you know, grateful. Uh, you know, the Honorable Minister Minakshi Lekhi, she posted my performance at the India mm -hmm. International Center on the on her official page. And uh, that was very, very kind of her, very great of her. <laughs> Uh, she didn't know me, but she just did it. And so, you know, there, there's some moments which are very gratifying. And and what is your, you know, women uh, in our society in particular, we uh, we have, a, we've, I've, we've seen our mothers do it. And it's sort of a legacy that you prioritize everyone else before you, you know, everyone must eat before you, everyone must get their rest before you. And you always put yourself last. Now, something like bodybuilding is so, so demanding. Yeah, bodybuilding is like uh, you, you got to be a bit of a narcissist and uh, there is a goodness in narcissism. Uh, I take it. I don't like it. But, you know, uh, when you are not, you are you have a bit of it, you know, have just, a streak, you know, kind of streak of it, an element. Uh, when you're at the gym, you're not judging and looking at others. You're looking at your own journey. So that kind of makes you positive. So um, uh, they say even in the most negative things, there is uh, something positive. And 
uh, for me, it was easier because uh, I'm now not living in a joint family. I am with my son, uh, who is an autistic child, and he needs, uh, you know, acceptance. And so he gives it back in turn. So he accepts whatever I do. Uh, so maybe it was, you know, in the sense that with all the difficulties that come of doing it all by yourself, doing it all alone, there are certain uh, uh, good things in it that there's nobody who is stopping you or uh, bothering you mm -hmm. much. So uh, that helped me. And uh, uh, yes, if you if you are going to prioritize others, then you need to prioritize yourself because if you are strong, only then you can look at your look after your family until the end of your life. So uh, you know, I felt uh, because my son is uh, having his own challenges, and uh, yeah. I I feel scared that if something happens to me or I go weak. Uh, it is my duty not only to look after him until the end of my life, but also yes. secure his life after I go. So I have no choice but to be strong until the end. So uh, that kind of can give a silent message to all women. You don't want to be a liability on others. I saw my father dying. Uh, he was very, very fit, very strong. Uh, uh, till the last day, he went to the market, he got things, he was working at the bank, he came, he fell down and he died. And I was in shock because I felt that uh, my father uh, was so strong, he died and it wasn't a good death. But then I saw my mother dying. So for two years, she was very sick. She was mentally sick. She had to go through so much of ECTs. Uh, and then, you know, her kidneys uh, failed and she, she went through so much trauma. I felt that uh, my father died a good death because he was very fit and very strong. And to an extent, he prioritized himself. Uh, he was never a liability. So these are great messages that you need to prioritize yourself if you need to prioritize others. That's beautifully said, really. And, and, and you know, I, I have a very close friend uh, whose uh, child is also autistic. And she tells me, you know, every night when she goes to bed, uh, the last thing that she... Uh, the last thought in her mind is that if I don't wake up tomorrow morning, I've done all that I can do and I've made him um, uh, capable of, you know, figuring out the world on his own. So I, I, I totally get what you're talking about. I think um, it's, it's so powerful. And what a motivator, my God. And how many hours do you spend in the gym? <laughs> Yeah, it's actually not, not the number of hours, it's the quality. I know people who go to the gym and then they do a set and then they talk around and they try to tease others and they take a lot of pictures. Um, I think that even the rest period between sets in my weight training is, uh, you know, 30 seconds. And in that 30 seconds, I keep back my weights or um, I, I mentally revise what I have to do in my uh, Bharatanatyam mm -hmm. or some step that I don't remember. So it's the, even if it's like one hour, it is like very intense and very focused and very strong. It's a beautiful meditative one hour. Uh, so at the gym is one hour, but then I do have a Bharatanatyam class. I have my Bharatanatyam practice. I, I do have my pranayam and I do have my uh, yoga, of course, which I love to do. So, you know, it's all spread out uh, and everything, you know, then it's like uh, the, they all converge together and everything is in totality. Uh, so the uh, at the gym, it's basically about one hour and it, uh, I have kind of a thumb rule of doing 20 to 24 sets uh, of a certain uh, body part, which I'm training on that specific day. That's how I figure it out. Mm -hmm. And now, and uh, let's let's ask uh, you a light question. When you look at our celebrities in India, uh, men and women, who do you think have the best, like good, healthy bodies? Well, I like, uh, you know, there's, he, I don't know if he's very popular. I'm not very familiar with Bollywood, but I like Vidyut Chambal. Uh, yes. He's uh, yes. very fit. Uh, he's very strong. He he does his moves very beautifully. He is also a culinary poet artist. But the thing is that, you know, when you go to the actual gurus in Kerala, they, they say one thing. They're very positive uh, about him. They say that, He's done it. Uh, he's done a great job by making people aware of Kalari Pai because that was also something that was banned by the Britishers. And uh, it's a beautiful art which was, you know, created by Lord Parshuram. It has an entire mythology and history behind it. The thing is that these people tweak it according to, you know, their own whims and fancies. Whereas the classical arts are very pure. They are very, very, very calibrated. 
so mm. he has kind of made his own moves so in the original art there are like eight animals you know whose postures and whose moves have been uh, emulated and kind of done but uh, you know he has made his own lizard move and something something but he's very fit he's very strong and the fact that he's an actor they need to have good presentation they need to learn their dialogues they need to act they need to stress out with the show it's like really commendable what he does uh, there are other actors who are fit but then they are uh, you know then they they go to extremes they may be going into anabolics uh, which i don't mm-hmm. like uh, that is amongst the youngsters otherwise uh, in the older ones is um, akshay kumar and amitabh bachchan who are who are really 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 fit mm-hmm. they're working so much at that day so phenomenal and, and, and known for their discipline i think it all comes down to discipline doesn't it i mean what yeah. what is your routine like what time do you go to bed when do you wake up do you binge watch netflix i mean do you do any of the things that we do uh, i mean I, i know you I, i think i must like a lot of people tell me i should be in touch with that aspect but i never watch television it's rarest of rare the only netflix uh, movie i've seen in my life is uh, no it's a web series called crown and uh, well, that's it i have uh, i i have never seen a netflix and people tease me okay watch netflix and then i laugh uh, so i have never done that i i would prefer to read a newspaper rather than watch television um uh, i get some clips of the news from uh, you know my from the instagram uh, pop ups uh, i may get a bit of that but i am so engrossed in my own uh, world of bharatnatyam and exercise and uh, you know a little bit of business that i'm planning a book that i'm writing uh, and then my son and there's so much to do that i'm mm-hmm. i'm like completely lost i don't know where the rest of the world is going i'm happy <laughs> you know in my own life <laughs> i don't care, I don't care about the india pakistan match i think that uh, i know they are so upset about it that they shouldn't have played once they have played but they go on to the next yes i mean i mean uh, so you uh, ideally stay away from social media and the outrage cycles mm-hmm. of the day there's some very nice my- small, a very nice child who looks after my social media and then i just uh, look into pop in once in a while and then you know then they i get messages like is it really you so then <laughs> they don't know what to say <laughs> i take it off I, you know we've spoken a lot about the physical benefits of staying fit and working out and and things like that you've also you know mentioned the mental health health challenges your mother faced uh, what is what are the mental and the psychological benefits of being physically fit and active and working on your uh, you know fitness levels on a daily basis Oh, of course that's infinite i think mental levels are much more it it is actually a uh, mental conditioning and uh, a kind of meditative process when you are able to pursue a fitness journey uh, like there are times uh, especially at the level when you're competing at an international level in bodybuilding or you're doing something like bharatnatyam or kalari pai small pains don't matter you need to you have to have the desire to be able to do that particular step or that particular move or that particular weight and when you are so uh, you know lost your focus elsewhere uh, first of all you you learn to conquer pain uh, then yeah. second when like i'm walking on a bodybuilding stage nobody is going to ask me oh you had a tough life you had you know all your pangs and agonies and sorrows and tragedies nobody is going to say oh she's a good woman let me give it to her it's not going to be that oh she's older woman let me give it to that no it's even if it's a 20 year old and i am 50 years old uh, they're going to see the judges if they are really right is they're going to see who is doing well who is smiling mm. you need to smile uh, mm. so you know there are so many things which we subconsciously overcome that we are we are learning to prioritize on what we want uh, we are able to smile in spite of the pain uh, we are able to get up and move that inertia of laziness is uh, immediately overcome because of the desire to do what we we uh, have prioritized in our life uh, then mm-hmm. second if you look at it biochemically then you know the all the endorphins and all the biochemicals that are uh, secreted if you are doing a physical activity serotonin it goes without saying that is there that is uh, that is too immediate but there are other benefits like when you have an overall good fitness you can travel you there is a kind of 
great great freedom of the soul because you know that at any age you can go and merge even in a 20 year old uh, children group you can uh, go with a 80 year old group you can go anywhere you can do anything and that kind of gives you an eternal kind of freedom uh, you know you are never a, in a situation where oh i cannot get up these climb these stairs or i cannot go through uh, you know uh, go climb through a wire uh, you know kind of you can get into anything go anywhere do anything there's so much of freedom you can move the way you want to move you can achieve what you want to achieve you can explore your potentials until the end of your life and that is what living life is so there is a lot lot more uh, which is undefined and it is not obvious so uh, when people when they talk about uh, being fit then they only talk about how you look that's just, that's a bonus that's just a bonus but there is a lot more uh, you know spiritual aspect of uh, being fit which uh, comes uh, which you can only sense once you've been in that zone so that way it is very helpful which brings me to the next question uh, you know bodybuilding uh, requires a t certain type of like you said developing muscles looking a certain way uh, you know pushing your body to that extreme how have you found india specific i, I know the west has a different approach to this perception wise how have men and women responded to your body you know when they see the muscles do men get a complex and uh, you know what is what is it like what's it like um yeah it's a mixed thing but let me tell you in the beginning uh, there were people there were trainers the professionals immediately might have been uh, opposing me but when i went i competed abroad and i was a bit successful uh, after that there were a lot of younger boys uh, they had two things in their mind the first thing was they said oh we cannot do it being boys and men and she's done it uh, so they really gave me a lot of respect and lots of boys uh, you know more than that they came to me we want you to meet uh, you know our mother our wife our sister because uh, you know she has given up on herself and uh, you know she feels uh, low all the time she's sad all the time we see you smiling in spite of everything so uh, you know i got a lot of love and attention especially when there was nobody else uh, now of course we have hundreds of girls but uh, i got a very good response in the beginning uh, now uh, the uh, the girls you know the immediate society neighborhood you know aunties of my age were all you know oh my god you know uh, what the hell she's up to they were like that um, but uh, the the younger girls the younger generation have been very very loving towards me like it's overwhelming so um, mm -hmm. even now all the young girls they come to me and they say when we grow older we we want to be like you so <laughs> that is so heartening i mean like uh, that you know kind of completes me uh, absolutely mm -hmm. that's amazing so mm -hmm. it, there is a section of people you know in spite of the fact that we say that we have an orthodox society uh, but when i went on to do it and i didn't bother in the beginning uh, you know then they all came back to me uh, there is there will always be a group of naysayers but uh, mm -hmm. i think we always have a balance sheet and in a nutshell i think uh, i'm happy with the kind of response i get and do you, do you are you seeing bodybuilding picking up in younger women the younger generation are you yes, seeing more women drawn to it a lot a lot like you know even now we see uh, actresses like say tapsi pannu and uh, one uh, young uh, disha patni is there oh, yeah. uh, yes. very happy deadlift and a uh, lot of girls are realizing that if you are weight training you are increasing your bone density your you are uh, very much increasing the longevity of how uh, you know your shelf life as an actress and how you're going to look mm -hmm. uh, so if you're doing it from the beginning uh, you know it's like those years and years they're going to add on uh, you know bit by bit and they're going to make you very strong so when when we see um, say a young girl uh, uh, the young girls they all look the same they they, they mm -hmm. don't they don't look different but as they grow older and then you know they reach their 40s and 50s then you know the the difference becomes very very uh, conspicuous so uh, definitely now people are seeing uh, uh, and I, i at the cost of sounding immodest you know i may tell you lots and lots of girls have started uh, looking at me in their weight training a uh, lot mm. of you know, men who were coaches and they they used to message me you know in 2009 10 11 we've been telling girls that uh, look at her she looks fine 
uh, she's not going to be you know that a uh, big hulk or anything you're not going to be that uh, you must do weight training because she's uh, able to stay strong at her age uh, so uh, in the last 10 years um, uh, of course now you know there are so many people to follow hundreds of people to follow but then people are looking at it very differently now and so mm-hmm. i think I, i mean it's going to be a, be a trend a lot of actresses are doing it now and what do you what is your day like what time does it start and what do you eat during the course of the day one of our viewers wants to know what's your routine like on an average day oh yeah it's a, it's, it may get intimidating but i get i get up at like say 5:30 and okay. uh, i take uh, you know this apple cider vinegar and then uh, after a little gap i take uh, we call haleem seeds you know it's olive seeds which i have soaked overnight and fenugreek seeds and then mm-hmm. i do my uh, pranayam you know in pranayam i have uh, the mantras uh, i love to hear pandit jasraj uh, he's got the upasana and you know there are certain days but i i find it very beautiful in different rags i am also a student of classical music so i really uh, understand wow. that and, I, and and i really relish it like it's make, makes me absolutely ecstatic you know so i do the, i play that and i do my pranayam and uh, i play the conch and the uh, rudraksh because it's got those acupuncture uh, properties acupressure properties and so then wow. uh, after that i uh, uh, eat a little i go to the gym i weight train i come back and then i have like asparagus and green leafy salads and uh, egg whites and then uh, after a gap i take a few uh, macadamia and walnuts and then then my next meal is the is my lunch uh which has a uh, grilled chicken and salad and um, a little bit of maybe yogurt with blueberries uh you know that and then in the evening it's uh, tea with the uh, uh, dry fruits and then at mm-hmm. night it's again a fish salad or something uh so at night after that just before uh, bedtime i take uh, this turmeric raw turmeric with the uh, mm-hmm. honey and uh, a glass of milk and uh, my okay. supplements and post workout is protein glutamine so that's that's about it and what time do you sleep um i by i sleep by 11:30 uh, you know because uh, mm-hmm. i help my son a lot he recently got a job uh, with hcl technologies at 32 years of age you know that's a huge thing wow. for me and, uh, yeah you know i had never imagined that uh, uh i i had thought that my son might never get a job and if he ever gets i'd never taken alcohol in my life and that day i will take a glass of champagne but i really yeah. could get myself to do it i said that everybody is um, yeah, celebrates with champagne so i just went to the temple and i distributed sweets and said i can't do this champagne thing <laughs> i just gave it up and then uh, you know it was like a bit funny and Uh, so he's now he's finding he finds it difficult sometimes to uh, cope up with the tasks he gets in his job mm-hmm. so i sit beside him i help him i i make my suggestions uh, but you know he has fortunately i think it's a rare case uh, that in spite of you know doctors had told him he will not be able to speak and he uh-huh. ended up completing his graduation and post graduation in multimedia company he did it from london and leeds uh, wow. he tried to get here yeah he couldn't do it because of the society but they have this autism protection uh sense mm-hmm. in the university so i uh, i had a bit of support it was very difficult mm-hmm. for me to leave him in uk and you know keep going uh, but i was like very determined so that was another phase of my life so you yeah, so he's, he's non verbal is that is that what you're saying he's verbal now he's verbal yeah okay, he's, he's verbal. verbal he's also learning classical music with me he's given some performances also so he's uh, he's doing it uh, autistic children have so celestial he still, he still goes to the gym with you you still yes. go to the gym you he doesn't want to go with me he goes to the gym he doesn't want to go with me he says that everybody says oh your mother she does uh, lift so much of weights and you are a young man you don't so he feels uh, upset so he goes on his own he says i will do what i want to do and come back but i am really happy that he goes on his own because uh, yes. you know other, he will do it only when i'm there Uh, i wanted it to come from within him no matter how less it is because actually consistency is more important than uh, intensity so he realizes that i don't think uh, there's anybody who is uh, in my proximity remains unfit everybody around me you know uh, sooner or later they, they just they just give up and then they start 
uh, you know, exercising or controlling their diet. Absolutely. I mean, it's just so inspiring to talk to you. You know, I'm getting motivated. I hope it lasts. But, uh, you know, uh, just last question for this evening is what are your tips for people to get started? You know, because most of us are not even, I forget getting to your level. We're not even at that phase where we are active and moving around enough because lifestyles have just become like that. And with COVID, uh, you know, we've become even more used to staying indoors, not getting out, being lazier, eating more. I think, you know, the key is to begin uh, very slowly. People want to go, you know, to the gym and then on the first day they want to, uh, within one month, they want to get fit. I think we should first start accepting that let's let do very less of it and let's decide to you know work on our habit more than the weight training. Uh, I want my habit to become such. So I am working on the habit that I form. Uh, my habit should not break. Whether the body is going to become thin, fat, strong, weak, whatever, it will take care of itself. So uh, if you have a lot of, you know, if you you know, subscribe to fitness, uh, you know, uh, portals, uh, have fitness magazines. If you have that around you, you are fine tuned to think like that. Uh, be around people who are into fitness and go to a gym, even if you're going to chat and come back. It's not possible that you go to the gym and you do nothing. Uh, you may do very less of it, but you will be in the flow. And one day uh, it will be like take off. And give yourself all the time, you know, you, you have to be kind to yourself. But I say, I feel that the way we have a bath, the way we eat our food, uh, we should first of all resolve that we are going to do this daily and we are not going to res uh, attach ourselves to the result. The moment you attach yourself to the result, you will lose the game. You have to enjoy, you have to attach yourself to the process that I am not going to lose this habit of going to the gym. If you concentrate mm -hmm. on the habit uh, that uh, forming the habit is uh, to change this habit of eating this food and not that food. That forming the habit, my, my mind should be focused on formation of the habit. If the habit is formed, it's a victory. Forget about the result. The result will come. So if you think mm. like that, you will stick to it. I think that's brilliant advice. Don't attach yourself to the result because even now if you go online and you read these uh, comments and user groups you know everybody wants to know how do i do this how long will it take <laughs> you know that's the sort of anxiety that is pouring out of people even before they embark on a journey you know uh, how many how many days how many weeks will it take to lose x number of kilos <laughs> so i think no, what you've said no matter, is no matter how fit you are how whether you're olympia champion the day you start eating ice cream, gorging on cakes and pizzas and whatsoever, you're going to become fat the next day. So we have to work on forming the habit. If the habit is there, then everything will take care of, you know, you will become your natural self the way you're supposed to be. And the mind, the psychology, everything will fall in place uh, automatically. So, uh, yes, you, this, this commercial thing that being become thin in so many days is the worst thing that you can do to yourself. You just have to focus about, on that. What about these fat diets? You know, they keep coming up. The uh, Atkins diet and paleo and this and that and South Beach diet. And I mean, they sell millions of copies of books. The the dietitian becomes a millionaire. And there's a phase, you know, I mean, it's everywhere. Everyone's doing it right. Right now, everyone's doing intermittent fasting, which I have to say is good. I like intermittent fasting. I wouldn't put it in the same category as the diets. No, if you're not if you're not eating in between, you're eating three meals a day. You are in, doing intermittent fasting, and uh, the the thing is that you are um, you know everybody wants magic. Everybody likes Harry Potter. They enjoy it. Nobody likes science. The textbooks are boring. Yeah. So everybody likes uh, say Bollywood music, Honey Singh. They don't want to listen to classical music. But you know what? The the idea is to tell them that the real may be boring. But, you know, a boring life is, a, is the most beautiful. You have an uneventful life. It's the greatest blessing. You have a very, very simple, boring life. I think there's nothing as ecstatic as that. You have to sense the ecstasy and the high, you know, in a boring thing. And it is eternal. It will be with you forever. So if you 
if you, people are going for uh, all this ketogenic and south beach diet it will not last they you have to develop a habit which you can carry on forever and you are damn sure that that's this is how your body will we are also learning and understanding our individual bodies in the process of developing a simple lifestyle because it is simple is so easy you can do it and when you when you go on doing it you know how your body is responding how is how it is becoming eventually you will start having faith on that process so you will not leave it because you will get the results so you will not leave it and then all these things will not fascinate you so it is for people who want shortcuts so i am really sure that people think okay with this diet i will lose this much of weight and then i will be fine but it will never happen your body the process of uh, your uh, teaching your body which enzyme to secrete uh, the the metabolism of certain organs will all go haywire and it, this this thinness or whatever you call it will stay only till that diet is there because you uh, temporarily conditioned your body like that but if it if you want it to be permanent uh, realistic practical then it has to be a simple balanced lifestyle uh, forever mm -hmm. and then we find why life is more important the real things in life you know you want mm. to develop a certain art you want to learn a certain language uh, there are certain greater things within our human soul so many great things which we have not even touched so if we yeah. are free from all those traps all those uh, you know uh, things then we are going to a next level of self actualization and uh, so we are we are live that so a lot of people tell me you are not living your life you are not enjoying your life i said how do you know i i'm i'm really enjoying myself i'm doing so many things and i love it so it's also to teach yourself what you want to what you want to love what you want to enjoy so the right things to enjoy that is important no i i so agree with you and you know it's it's so liberating i love what you say about an uneventful life can give you ecstasy because you know i'm a bit of a drama chaser and, you know being a writer a screenwriter you know i feel like it fuels my creativity to have those events happening around me but uh, you're right you know the days that are totally boring are the days on which i'm absolutely at peace so i think it's been such a delightful interaction with you rita our our viewers are just uh, showering you with praise but i think you are used to that but more than anything else i think it's so inspiring the fact that i mean there's of course the fitness journey but um, you have your challenges and you still have such a positive outlook on life you're learning new things you're growing uh, with the with each passing day and i would really love to have you back on because i think uh, more and more people need to hear from you and uh, it's truly it's truly been a pleasure it's been a pleasure to you're a great listener and that's how our interview should be and thank you so much for having me Not at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna have you back on because I think I could do with a couple of your uh, doses from you every once in a while to get back on track. Thank you so, <laughs> so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you everybody for watching. Uh, thank you to Prabha Khetan Foundation for hosting this very special interaction with Rita, and uh, we're going to continue to bring you inspiring women who are changing the way uh, they look at the world, and with that. the world changes how it looks at women and i think that is so significant and so important so do come back and join us again do like share subscribe this channel share it with your friends there's some amazing tips i think the biggest thing that i've learned with i from my interaction with rita is that make small habits and then once those small habits take a grip on you you can go on to making bigger lifestyle changes so Thank you once again everybody for watching and keeping your questions coming and we'll be back again soon.